This video is intended for weavers who already have a work, good working knowledge of we drafting for weaving and also some experience using weaving software. Otherwise it may be a little hard to follow. This is a fairly complete example. The picture you are looking at is from a hand weaver's pattern book by Marguerite Davison. This is a, the Maltese cross. It's an overshot draft. We're going to enter this into Tempo Weave using some of the features to make a complete width for our project. Okay, now I've entered the threading from the book and I'm going to start doing the treadling. I did the first four picks are six, five, four, three. And then if you look at the book, the draft that I showed you on the uh, insert from the book, they say three on each of the successive treadles. Now, if you haven't done overshot, this may seem a little confusing. How can you do the same treadle three times? Well, you don't, because you're doing a tabby pick in between. So I did 666, which is in the book, and then it goes to 555, five, five, then 444. Four, four, Three, 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 and then they go back on treadle six twice, six, six, and then I will do three, four, five, six, five, four, three, six, six, three, 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 four, 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 five, 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 six, 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 then three, four, five. So for the first picture in that book, the number one, that is the entire treadling sequence. Now I'm going to collapse this and I'm going to zoom using control minus. So that is the draft of the Maltese cross. Now, Okay, if you look up at the threading, I've added a little more information. In blue, I put some more threading elements that I plan to add to my table runner to be used between sections of the Maltese cross. I also added a small 4321 and 1234 section that I can use at my far right and far left of my table runner. So we've got the threading elements in pretty good shape, so before we start defining how to lay those out and repeat them, let's turn our attention back to the weft. Remember that we've got um, our pattern treadles there, but we don't have the um, tabby treadles, so we need to add those. If we go to Tools, there's an Add Tabby. And before I do this, I want to show you something. You see the color here? Up on the palette, that's my current color. If I click Add Tabby right now, it's going to add red tabby treadles and I'm not sure I want my tabby thread to be red. Maybe I do, but let's make it white. So now when I do add tabby, now it defaults to the last two treadles. If in this case, in this, in the often that's where the tabby treadles are. In this book, they're on one and two. So I'm going to click change it to one and two and click OK. Now look what happened. After every one of my weft picks, I'm either doing a one or a two. One, two. So it doubled the number of threads. I'm going to do control minus to make this smaller. And it, one of the things that Tempo Weave does not do at this time is those tabby picks look the same size and there's not currently a way to make those look skinnier. So your design may be a little elongated if you choose to use tabby threads that are much thinner. Okay, so we've got our basic components planned out. So now let's start playing and design our runner. There's a tool up here, see under the tools menu, called section marker. First thing we're going to do is we're going to mark some sections. So with the section tool selected, I'm going to drag across these red threads of my Maltese cross. Now if I hover, it says section one. Oops, I just slid, slid over. So I'm going to right click 
and I'm going to change the name of this to something that means something to me. Maltese, and it says it's going from location 1 to 42. I'll click OK. Now this section here, I intended that to be as a section, and notice I started dragging and I had it off. So um, I didn't drag where I meant to drag, so I right click, I hit delete section, and get rid of it. So let's do this one, and I'm going to give it a more meaningful name. Um, I'm thinking of this being like a divider between the Maltese cross motifs. And this one I'm thinking of as being my right border, or is it my left border? I'm thinking it's going to be my left border. I'll change the name of that too. This one will be my right border. Okay. So you're probably wondering if you've used weaving design software before, what on earth am I doing? Well, this is something that's kind of unique to Tempo Weave. So if I go to section assembly here, and you'll notice those sections I just typed in, I'm going to drag this divider down. If you drag till that cursor becomes the little plus sign, you can drag it wherever you want it. So the available sections on war are Maltese, divider, left border, right border. Okay, so I'm going to add a group. And you see down below, this is where I'm building my draft. What we're doing here is we're going to copy, we're going to select sections that we've marked, and we're going to generate a brand new whiff. This is not the whiff we're going to use to weave with. We're generating a new one. So I'm going to first take my right border, and I can select that, and I'm going to drag it down to group one. And I think I want to repeat that border like probably three times. Let's add another group. So now I'm going to do a group, and I'm going to start my Maltese threading pattern. And I'm going to do the divider. And maybe I want to do this, I don't know, four times. Now, when I get ready to end, I want it to be a Maltese on each side. So I'm going to do one more finishing Maltese. And notice the scroll bar here. If you're doing a long one like this one, you might have to use the scroll bar. And then I'm going to do my left border. Because remember, I started with my right border, and this will be my left border. Now notice I'm not seeing the... the um, I'll do a refresh, and it'll show me my number of threads per group, and in total, but it doesn't show me the width. The reason it's not showing me the width is I didn't set my picks per inch So and my ends per inch. So I'll do 24 for each. Now I'll hit refresh again. Now I've got some, some more interesting things to look at. So I can see that my border is about a third of an inch. I can see that the group with my patterning is about 10.6 inches plus 1.75. And my right border, I probably, if I did my right border too, I want to do my left border too as well. Okay, so at this point in time, we've got something to look at for the threading. But what we haven't done is we haven't marked anything in the weft. So let's go to section marker again, and I'm going to show you a little trick here. So I'm going to start dragging down with section marker. And notice I don't have all of my threads selected. 
I'm going to hit right click and notice I can rename it. But let's go see what the last thread is. Let's just do the treadling sequence for Maltese Cross right now. We're not going to do anything else. We can put something in later if we want to. So you remember when I told you that you could see the cursor, the position where you're hovering up above the tie up? So this, this um, 2 is my last thread. See, it's 2, 84. So I know I've got 84. I want to do all of those threads as one single group on weft assembly. So I click weft. I'm going to double click this section and I'm going to go to 84. So that's the whole thing. When I do that, see how it highlights? And to use this, I'm going to do add group and I'm going to drag section 1 down here. Now once you get a, one of these special widths like this, where you've got a weave assembly defined, you want to save it. And uh, because when you generate, you may want to go back and tweak these. You may, we may decide when we're doing our weft that we want some kind of border to start weaving and a, or a hem and another border and hem at the end of the cloth. So there's things that we can do. So let's just do a file save as. And I will, um, I'll just do, call this testing Maltese. Okay. So at this point in time, it's saved. So let's generate and see what we get. I'm going to hit go. Now, can you see the cascading windows here? There's the testing Maltese we just saved. This one's untitled because I haven't saved it yet. This is the one it generated. I'm going to maximize it. Now I'm going to do control minus to make it smaller. And I have the workings of a draft for my runner. So as I'm looking at this, I can say well, I should have really generated more repeats of my weft because I can't see a lot. And maybe I want some blue border down there. I don't know. Maybe another pattern. And I could say maybe I want my stripes wider or a different color. There are a lot of things you can choose to do. So I can close this. I'm not even going to bother to save it. So the first thing I'm going to do is like show me what this looks like when it's repeated more times. Remember, you can hit refresh and tell, okay, so that would be 17 inches in length, 420 picks. I can look back at my warp, and I can say, I wonder what it would look like if the dividers report were, um, were done twice instead of once. So now I can hit go again. Let's hit save. It's a good idea to, to save it before you do this. So I can hit go again. I'm going to maximize this. I'm going to zoom it to where I can see it. Now you see my dividing lines are much larger. And I have more weft repeats. So you get the idea. You can go it back and forth. You can change your colors, the number of repeats, all types of things um, to get that to what you're looking for. Then once you're happy with your design, you just do a save as, give it a name, and uh, make sure you save your, your design.